Hey, I believe that we're live here on Vaginal Fantasy. This is the 14th episode. Oh my god. And I know, it is episode 14. That means we've been doing this for 14 months, guys. That's what that means. Oh my god. That's, like a, like, that's like a baby and a half. <laughs> that's a really what? weird way to put it. <laughs> What's a baby and a half? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, what would that be? That would be, is a baby, is a baby over at 10 months? Is that what you're saying? Nine months. Nine months. Oh, is that the end of a baby? Alicia, that's when the baby ends. <laughs> this isn't that that's kind of the fantasy. Done. This is not. <laughs> baby pops out. Okay, whatever. Anyway, this is Vaginal <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> if you have no idea what's going on um, from the bottom thing, it is a, Vaginal Fantasy is a romance, paranormal romance book club that uh, we host here on Geek and Sundry, starring the following amazing hosts slash personalities slash ladies. Veronica Belmont. Ladies. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the month again for <laughs> Vaginal Fantasy. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I, we don't use that time of the month again, because I think that I, really fits really, in well with our whole thing. <laughs> you, you just driven off every single male. <laughs> 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 I said gentlemen. They don't want to hear about anything like that. Then Kyla K Kaysby. What's your yeah. name again? <laughs> Kyla Kaysby. <laughs> nice to meet you, Felicia. <laughs> um, and Bonnie Burton. And this is not a tampon commercial. <laughs> no. It's a yeah. romance book club. We read a book every month, and uh, an alt, and then we discuss them and generally get drunk during the time, so we get loud and talk over each other around the 45-minute point. Just bear <laughs> with us. Yeah. Um, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, well, I'm on a lot of pain meds because my <laughs> back went out, so uh, I'm crippled, but I'm drinking uh, uh, cranberry juice with vodka out of a wine glass. Ooh. On top of Vicodin? Yeah, and then I also have a tiny wine for Felicia, in honor of Felicia. Thank you. And then I have maple juice in case I need uh, vitamin. Yeah. yeah. So are you supposed to be taking alcohol with what you're on right now? Isn't it? That... Yeah, the fine print was really tiny, it's so. Can, who can read that? <laughs> no. It's just your uh, actually once you've been if they really cared, If they really cared, they'd make that warning like label really big. Yeah. Way bigger. <laughs> Um, and Ky Kyla, you got a new job, and that's why you're so pretty today. Oh, and you look oh. so cool in life. Oh, oh thank you. I did. I, I did. I got a new job. I'm a social media marketing fantasier. Yay. Too. So I'm fancy. Like, I feel fancy. I, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I love it there. And Veronica, what's up with you? Um, I am drinking um, a, I, I, it's kind of like a mudslide on the rocks. It's got Baileys and Kahlua and vodka and milk. And it's themed for our book tonight because it's Baileys because, how do you say his name? Is it Roark? Rourke. I think it's Rourke. 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 Yeah. Wow, we keep getting these like. We'll talk about him because he's Irish. So yeah. Baileys and then Kahlua because um, she's into coffee. Yeah, very. So into it's that's that's where that's where it all comes yeah. together. Yeah, and I'm drinking much. whiskey because I I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking. I don't know what you call this. I, I I have overproof rum that I got in Jamaica, which smells like fire. It's wow. called, it's called rum fire. So that's oh, the, well, with that. and I'm putting it in ginger ale because I didn't want caffeine. I just wanted something bubbly. So what is this called? It's called a rum no. and ginger. Rum and ginger, I've is that had it? A rum and ginger. I've had a jack. Wait, isn't that dark and stormy? Yes, is it, it is a dark and stormy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is like Rourke. Mm. Oh. 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 Rourke. Yeah, Rourke. Before, Rourke. Yeah, Rourke. Okay, before Rourke. we get into the book, which is Naked in Death, um, I want to shout out some local meetups. Um, this club, or book club, has a very active Goodreads forum. We have almost 10,000 people in our club, and a lot of them get together uh, on the off, you know, during the months to discuss the books and just meet each other, and it's become this really awesome thing. So I want to give some shout outs to some local meetups. In Austin on March 4th, they're going to meet at the Apothecary. In uh, Toronto on March 4th, the Aroma Espresso Bar. In the Twin Cities on March 1st, they're going to meet at the Liffey. Uh, New York City on March 15th, Argo Tea Cafe, San Francisco, March 3rd, Wicked Grounds, Australia, March 4th, they're going to have a G-plus hangout like we're doing, um, and NoHo on March 24th at the Steampunk Cafe, and mm -hmm. in St. Louis, March 2nd on the Elzebub, at Elzebub's house, so I'm not sure if that's a place or a woman named Elzebub. 
Is that the asshole? <laughs> or is it, or I'm sure Satan. we'll find out rather soon. Use your discretion if it's a person's house. Please don't go to Brandon. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's pretty cool to know about, and uh, we're excited that people are getting getting together and meeting people. Yay. Uh, yay. yay! So our book this month is called Naked in Death. And Oh, good. Thank you. Bonnie, you're always so good with your old fashioned <laughs> With your old-timey Dead Tree editions. Well, you know what? But I have something to say. Because yeah. Miss Felicia Day sent me a Kindle. <gasps> Yay! Oh, my Kindle. God! A Kindle. Amazon Kindle. And she has all this, like, fancy stuff on it. Was there Chaucer on this or something? No, that's just the default screen. There's a lot of romance books. I, I, dis I, 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 I disconnected it from my account, but it basically has all my books. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you can leave them so on there. Yeah, I left them okay. on there. So you have a lot of smut that was that came Yay. Out. That's yeah. pretty great. But I still pref I still use this though. It's pretty. Well, uh, I, use yeah. I use both. See, I, so I love the covers of these because I love you know like the black and the neon. I have. Oh, you, did, you know, I do. I do like the covers. I don't like the back cover. And this what is, is it? because it's. I think it's Nora Roberts. Oh. Right. Is she dressed oh. as a character? Yeah, she looks. She looks weird. That confused me too because they sell a five book set of those books as well, and yeah. um, she's on the cover of it. And I'm like, that, yeah. that's not. Here's that's the thing. Kind of now I understand mystery writers because I was raised on reading mystery writers like Robert mm -hmm. Parker, like Ed, Ed McBain, like all this, all this stuff. Like I get it. It's always the neon thing with guns and alcohol and dames. And then a dude, usually with some scotch and his dog. That's usually like the back cover. Yeah. But when I was reading this, I'm like, I need a character on here. Like I kept yeah. thinking, I mean, in my mind's eye, I can figure out what they look like. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of nice to have one of the covers on, like one of the characters on the cover. I don't like it when the character's on the cover. It kind of taints gets, my brain too much. Nothing, nothing again, <laughs> she kind of looks like a soccer mom. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's. It's not, it's not. I'm not against soccer moms. I'm just saying. Is yeah, this... well, Eve's not a soccer. I mean, that doesn't look like the character. And her jeans are very, it's very 90s jeans, guys. They're mom yeah. jeans. <laughs> Bonnie, well, stop pushing your anti-soccer mom agenda <laughs> on the show, okay? <laughs> we don't uh, need to hear I'm that. I'm not against all soccer moms. In fact, whoever gave birth to Beckham, I love you. Yes. <laughs> that is a or hot womb. Like hot womb. Hot um, womb. Let me just... For those of you who haven't read Naked and Death, let me give you a the brief blurb. This is a science fiction romance a series set in the near future. Um, Eve Dallas is a New York City police lieutenant. Lieutenant? Lieutenant? Great. Lieutenant <laughs> Hattie, a ruthless killer. In over 10 years on the force, she's seen it all and knows her survival depends on her instincts. And she's going against every warning telling her not to get involved with Rourke, an Irish billionaire, and a suspect in Eve's murder investigation. But passion and seduction have rules of their own, and it's up to Eve to take a chance in the arms of a man she knows nothing about, except the addictive hunger of needing his touch. Okay, let's talk about the this near future science fiction mm -hmm. thing, because this okay. kind of cracks me up. It is... It's... Spurious at best. Um, but what I love is that it was written in 1995. And yeah. so you get all of this, you know, future technology that cracks me up because it's like they, they're still scanning discs. Yes, and they're discs. Discs. They're like, they read everything. Discs, just discs everywhere. Everything's on a disc. And I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that keeps cracking me up. So stuff like that, I mean, it, it takes you out of it a little bit because... They're also there were in in the second book pick, um, Glory and Death. They were talking about legislation that was passed in 2012, and so you th you have to go back and start thinking like, oh, that didn't happen. Like that's not really <laughs> like I, I know I should be a little more open to the idea of alternate history and alternate reality kind of yeah. stuff, but it 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 was just kind of cracking me up a little bit, especially the discs because it definitely no. catches up with you whenever you do that. And I can't remember is this in like 21 something or something. Uh, 54 or something. 54 or something. Yeah. So, but yeah, you're right because um, there's like g guns are outlawed and only like hot, you know, collector rich people have guns anymore. Prostitution only the hot ones. Only yeah. the hot ones. <laughs> Prostitution is legal. Um, what else, you guys? Uh, oh, tobacco. Drugs. Yeah, you can't smoke, right? Isn't cigarettes yeah. totally illegal? It's, yeah, it's even though work lights up a lot. I thought it wasn't totally illegal. I thought you could still buy it. It's just like really, oh, wait, you really. You smoke it in like uh, kind of like uh, cruise ship rules, right? So if you're in pirate ocean waters, you could do whatever you want. What are they call those? International waters. International uh, waters. Pirate waters. Pirate waters. You could do that, and then uh, in the air, which I thought was funny because you really shouldn't be doing that on a plane. But hey, it's his own jet, so he can do whatever he wants. He owns the jet. He's Rourke. And then that's like <laughs> his own home. 
He's also Irish. I mean, come yeah. on. What? What's wrong with being Irish? Oh, yeah, nothing. Wait. I'm just saying it's like <laughs> Dylan Moran. Like, oh, I know. I'm, I'm trying to think of every <laughs> Irish person that's famous or that me. I know. That's me. Oh, I'm <laughs> Irish. I'm super famous. They all smoke. <laughs> I don't smoke. Yeah. There was also like 24-hour cosmetics and like permanent cosmetics. Where oh, yeah, I was done with that. sets and yeah. coffee was rare. You couldn't buy coffee. That was like, right. that would never happen. I don't want to live in that oh. world. I could see that happening because they said that the rainforests were completely mm -hmm. depleted and that the usual places that you grow coffee, you couldn't grow coffee, so everything was synthetic because yeah. it's cheaper. You could, buy, you could still buy coffee. I mean, Rourke had it. It's just yeah. really expensive, so it's like a luxury item. That that yeah. seemed realistic to me. That, did, that didn't throw me off. And Veronica, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that in a lot of sci-fi, like things that you take for granted now, like scarcity? Game? Wasn't like, it, in the steampunky one that we read, um, uh, they the sugar. Remember, mm -hmm. they couldn't get the sugar and stuff. Yeah, they couldn't. Same have thing. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I there's mean, there's flying cars. I mean, it is very and there's virtual later in the series. There's virtual reality rooms that, that you can like immerse yourself in, and there are VR goggles that she puts on that basically. So there's some things, you know. It's really uh, I want to talk about this later after we just talk in more general. But like, like if we were going to write a book now about 2154, like what would we think the technology would be? I think um, it'll be a lot more advanced than that. I, I think it would be smaller. We, yeah. They always used to make it bigger, you know, and everything is so much smaller yeah. because of the internet. Yeah. yeah. Well, because like, if you saw Google Glasses, like, I, I don't know if you saw that. The Warby Google. Parker Google Glasses. What? <laughs> Did you see that today? Wait, so they, are those going to be $99 too? I don't know. Or but $95? They, they partnered with Warby Parker, so they're, they're going to make the Google Glasses will look cool. Yeah, but then that means anybody you're around who has those things on is recording you. Yeah, so that's yeah. pretty... You but no privacy left. probably here's something to think about though, because privacy people are really into making sure that doesn't happen. So they might start, and this is just me thinking, because you can get hoodies now that uh, totally mask you from security cameras and RFID. So there's mm -hmm. maybe there's a way you could like get makeup that would reflect your something. Yeah, I'm just thinking futuristic. Where you could have it like if you don't want to be recorded, like your makeup reflects it, and so it can't mm -hmm. be can't be recorded. We'll just carry on little TV be gone jammers with us <laughs> yeah. all times, yeah, and you're talking to someone with glasses. What happens when you're just implanting things in your eyeball and recording them? Uh -huh. Like everybody you oh, know awesome. can record everything you're doing. That makes me paranoid. You do realize like you can be recorded doing pretty much everything now, right? I know. <laughs> when I think about that, I get nervous. And it's already changed all of our behavior. If you yeah. think about mm -hmm. how we behave now as opposed to how we used to behave, mm -hmm. and, and we've just taken it for granted because it's happened. Well, it happened actually pretty quickly, but it still, still was slow in comparison. Like it, you know, we've just adapted to it mm -hmm. that it'll be the same thing. You, no one's going to rebel. You're just going to be used to it. I don't that know. Something, it's something I did not notice in this book series, and I thought there'd be more of that with identity type stuff and, and privacy issues where it was more like the hate, like the palm scan and retina scan that's so everyone has that now. I mean that's pretty common yeah, now. Like, Whereas so in 1995 yeah. Palmans have a palm scan? Where have you got where do you go? Well you can get palm, you can get lots of things palm I scan. use I use clear at the airport and they scan yeah. my index finger. Yeah. 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 Really? I got yeah. that going on. I just uh, tweeted something today that there's a college that's letting people buy books by their fingerprints, and it fills wow. them. Yeah. I want to get an RFID implant. Just Do like you? In me, I have for years. Oh, so you, no would, you would you what what would that get you? What what is a great scenario? Well, that's the thing. I mean, if I lived in Japan, it would be a lot better, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so if I could, yeah. So yeah, what would be the advantage? What's what are the advantage? Well, I just want basically to have technology embedded in me where I can walk into a room and it will sense like that it's me and it will it will put all the household settings to what I want them to be or I get in my car yeah. and it's like, oh, and let then me adjust the seat for out, you. This is all, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. and Veronica, when there's, there, a glitch, when there's a glitch, then your toaster's going to come after you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already scared of, the, I'm scared of the Roomba at work, so I don't know. No, no, you're not. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no, you're not. A little. Put a cat on top of that thing, and you'll be fine. I want to. They won't let me. You know um, how you can get over your rumba fear is just uh, duct tape a cocktail shaker to it. And oh yeah, we were going to use it as a yeah. cocktail delivery. Be fine. But okay, this is slightly off topic, but but part of it. Do you guys ever feel like when <laughs> when you're on your phone 
and you uh, and you copy something like a link. You mm -hmm. like you copy a link on your phone, and then and then you go and you look at like three different things. You go to three different apps and stuff, and then you finally get back to Twitter or text or whoever you're gonna you know paste that link to. Do you ever feel like you carry the link in your finger? Whoa! No, <laughs> no. no. I do now. Because I do. <laughs> that, that's some. You're you're a human clipboard. That's what you are. You're, you're clippy. Stuck. You're, you're clippy. clippy, Kyla. Clippy. You're clippy personified. You are the human incarnation. Of like clipping. you could go to the bathroom and come back and still paste that thing in there because it's in your finger. Wow. <laughs> you, just, you just made it more, not much more interesting. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Um, you, could okay. go, you could go out of state, come back, and paste it still. <laughs> you can just paste it, put it in, and put, so, like touch somebody's nose, and then you yeah. paste it on their like, nose. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, oh all right, so, you've been pasted. Uh, we got a little bit off topic. Let's talk about what we thought of the book. Um, Bonnie, do you want to go first? To, what uh, do you think of the book? I, I am trying to curb my over-talking, so have me go after Kyla. Okay, Kyla, go first. <laughs> oh, oh, me. I was looking at comments. Uh, I really, really liked it. I just, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed um, Eve. I, you know, I... I I probably said this about another thing, but I think it's because she's a detective or whatever. Um, you know, I mean, you know what I mean. Uh, because it totally reminds me of V.I. Warshawski in that same way. Mm -hmm. So I and I still have this kind of visceral connection to V.I. Warshawski books from when I was like 15 or whatever. So I really liked her because of that. And uh, yeah, I just I I liked the world. I liked the future that she was living in. I you know I I don't know. I just really I liked her character. So, yes. Thumbs up. Yeah, that's, she, she's a great character. Yeah. Uh, Veronica, what did you think? I liked it, too. I thought it was a fun, quick read. Um, I, I, I like Eve, although I have one, one quote that I wanted to point out. This actually may have been from, this is from Glory and Death, but it just, it's no spoilers. Uh, but I think it really, it, it, it kind of nutshells her. That's not a word. <laughs> is that a verb? <laughs> that, is that a verb? Can I make that a verb? Yeah. It nutshells her. It encapsulates her personality. So it's when she's talking to the doctor, Mira, and uh, Mira says, you're always careful in what you say to me, so I assume family is on your mind. I don't have family, Eve shot back, and I've got murder on my mind. <laughs> if you want to report to the commander that I'm unfit for duty, that's just fine. <laughs> I got murder on my mind. It was like, she's, it's, she's a little that's bit too... She's a little that's bit too, it. like, hard-boiled. You know what I mean? It's a little yeah. bit too... Really? Uh, <laughs> like at Thanksgiving or anything? No. What? What? What part? I have family. I have murder on my mind. Oh well, no. But I mean, she's got. She doesn't have her family's murder on her oh. mind. But I mean, it's just like she seems a little one-dimensional sometimes. I think it's starting to get a little bit better in the second book when she starts to kind of accept Rourke, Rourke as Rourke, like you Rourke. know that he actually does love her and they can have some kind of relationship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at first I was a little bit like, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, you, you've got issues, all right, you can't accept love into your life, okay, let's move on. Like, sometimes I just want, like, it, it seems like so much of a character trait that it, it becomes frustrating. Stereotype, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, just, all right, fine. Like, clearly he's nuts about you, just give it up. Like, come on. <laughs> I don't mean give it up, I mean just, like, give up the, the attitude. Give it, give it up. Give, just give yeah. it up. Give it up. She kind of does that. Just give it up. Yeah. Um, no, that's good. But yeah, um, I really like the book. I mean, I, about four years ago, I had a Christmas break, and I picked up this book just randomly, and I read 20 of them in a row. Like, within, like, five or six days, I read Oh, my God. Books. I yeah. didn't get up from the couch. Like, there are 34 books in this uh, series or something like that. Like, it's, a, it's, in, the, it's in the mid-30s now. And I've gotten kind of bored with them lately because as you get along, I don't feel like, you know, but I'm talking like they were great up until like 22 at the, you know, even after that. They're, they're basically like watching Law and Order to me. That's what I feel about it. And mm. yeah, I agree with you that she is a little stiff sometimes, but I don't know. I love Law and Order. Like this is very much like mm -hmm. Castle to me, which I love that show. People and, on Twitter were saying that. Yeah. 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 yeah like a uh, tough cop falling in love with charming playboy kind of guy. <laughs> Um, so to me, you know, I, I love the environment and it's definitely like watching Law and Order. Like, you know what you're going to get. It's a little formulaic after a while, but the first 10 especially, like, I just could not get enough. Uh, so that's just what I thought. Bonnie? Did, did someone say Law and Order? Oh, God. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. 
You're like Miles Davis now. <laughs> I was doing fake keyboard on my desk. You just couldn't see it. <laughs> you're not <laughs> <artist, Monica. laughs> <laughs> Someone please make an animated gif of that. <laughs> you're so into it, Veronica. I love Law and Order. I'm sorry, I, Bonnie. Your love, opinion. I love that each Law and Order had a variation of the theme song that was. <laughs> But it was like a minor key or like one note off, or yeah. but it's all the same theme. It's just yeah, but it really reflected the kind of Law and Order it was. Like the yeah. SVU one is a little darker. Yeah, the LA <laughs> yeah. one sounded the Sexier. LA one. I always thought I thought it sounded like a Nine Snails kind of ripoff song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, I like I said before I. Uh, I used to read all my dad's books that he had in his dad den, in the, you know, father den. His man cave. Of antiquity, <laughs> which was lots of wood bookcases, like, filled with detective novels. And so uh, I just read everything he had. And so this book kind of reminded me of that, that, you know, like Veronica said, that detective talk that normal people don't usually say. Uh, the things you wish you would say if you had time to think it. Mm -hmm. as well. I mean, there's plenty of times that she's talking to work where I'm like, God, I wish I wish I had thought of that, you know, with ex-boyfriend number seven. Um, so, <laughs> but I really liked the stories. I, um, I liked her as a character. I liked Rourke. I liked all the characters, actually. I thought they were interesting. I'm a big Blade Runner fan, mm -hmm. so I got yeah. kind of a Blade Runner vibe from this series, and Blade mm -hmm. Runner was made in the 90s, too. Actually, was it early 90s, late 80s? It was late 80s. And so when you look how well that no, holds up. No, it was mid-80s. Yeah, I was it was mid-80s. And you look, at, you look at how well that holds up, uh, that future for from the mid-80s. And that future's coming up. Was it 2015 was Blade Runner? Um, so it, it's just interesting to me how authors from years ago view what our pending future looks like. And sometimes they get it right away. And sometimes you're like, wow, they went way off base. Um, and that's why some sci-fi works and some doesn't really hold up the test of time. Well, so. what, what, what do you think sci-fi now, like what sci-fi really defines our future now? There's not that much good sci-fi anymore. They're all, it's all like <clears throat> reboots of what we already did. It's in the a lot of reboots. Wow. I mean, uh, it, I don't know. Okay. It would, I don't know. There's a lot of reboots of older sci-fi that I think it's interesting. How they, Like Total Recall I thought was interesting, even though it was Badly acted. I mean, I maybe I'm the just, new one. Are you talking about or the old one? The, the new one. one. Well, oh, I haven't seen the new one yet. I mean, the old one's not exactly still. The old one oh, is amazing. God. Be quiet. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's such a good movie. <laughs> but do you um, know what I mean? Like that. Well, what about like um, Sunshine? It was really good. Yeah, I, well, I like, I mean, Looper, Looper was very Looper, wise. Looper Someone in the good. chat room said Ian M. Banks is great. You know, Robert yeah, J. Sawyer is I'm fantastic. About, no, no, Peter Watts. Of, oh, we're talking about books, not movies. I'm talking about James movies. S. A. Corey. I was okay, talking about movies. movies. I'm not okay. talking about books. No, no, the, the books are great nowadays. It's just sci-fi realized nowadays, you know, in TV and movies, yeah. is all just kind of rebooting what we right. already done. It's not right. like somebody's putting mm -hmm. a visionary thing. It's not like even, um, what was that Tom Cruise? Um, uh, Jack Reacher? No, the the one that he did with Spielberg, the old one, with the, with the, oh, with Minority the, Report. Oh, Minority yeah, Report. Minority Report. Yeah. At least that had a vision of something that would well, happen. Well, that's Philip K. Dick. Yeah, we're still Philip K. K. Dick, he, though. Yeah. He, he went crazy, but a lot of the things he thought up actually have come to pass. So yeah. I mean, he he was pretty much a crazy ass sci fi vision visionary. Like, yeah, was a total it's misogynist. Funny. Is he a visionary, or did we form our, our opinions of what future design and technology should be around classic science fiction? I'm actually yes, doing yeah. a panel at Engadget Expand next month that deals oh, with like how science fiction <laughs> has informed you know modern day te technological design yes. ideas and yes. stuff like that. Yes, I did a paper on that about. What? Oh, no, I'm gonna read your I, paper. Oh my god, I did a paper on that. It was about physics and Star Trek and uh, it's and pow wow. Yeah. Anyway, okay. it's not important. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it's important. That's a good question that you bring up, Felicia. Is you know books get it maybe because yeah. they don't have to deal with a budget, but like yeah. TV and movies have to deal with a budget, and there's only so much you could do. But and I, I find that the most for me the most believable 
future in sci-fi when I see it in movies and TV shows are the grittier versions, like the versions that we've blown each other to bits, and now we're kind of using bits and pieces of technology to put ourselves back together and form a society. Yeah, so, we're way more focused on apocalypse fiction and cinema. It's not right totally, but it's more post-war. Not so much apocalypse, but like that's why I like Firefly so much. That's yeah. why I like Star Wars so much. You can that's see 90s, it. man. That's all 90s. Yeah, we yeah. now. I know. I know. I can't think of anything. I mean, outside of Battlestar Galactica, I can't, and yeah. maybe some Star Trek stuff. But Star Trek was always so clean and polished and... Yeah. You know, it was all so well paid for. I think that somebody that should write a TV show that is gritty science fiction. Let's and make it happen. it. Yeah. I, yes, I will be in that. <laughs> Deep Space Nine was gritty science fiction. What, what is? Deep Space Nine. Well, yeah, it's old. It's old. Yes, all the science fiction was What about Revolution? Have you watched Revolution? That's supposed I to be I hated on. that show. Oh, it's supposed to. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, no, that's not good. Yeah, they mention you like, every five minutes. That's the one thing I'm having problems with a lot of my favorite fantasy and sci-fi shows right now is the product placement. And oh. it was weird, the product placement in this book. Did you not think that? <laughs> like, they mentioned Kool-Aid. Yeah. No, we had a Pepsi. bunch of people on the forums mention how she was, like, selling Pepsi all the time. Pepsi! I was like, what is with all the Pepsi? <laughs> okay. Oh, when, when it comes down to it at the end of the world, it's going to be Coke. Can we just... Put that I out agree. there. I'm it's not, not, it's not going to be Pepsi. Why not RC Coke. Cola? Why not P Mr. Pib? Yeah. Why Pepsi? Diet Coke. I had one today. <laughs> it's going to be all the Diet Coke. <laughs> I'm going to keep this civilization going. Yeah. Um, what mm -hmm. did you guys think about how the book was balanced between the smut, the plot, the character development, and story? Did you think that there was a lot going on in this book? And yeah. as a writer, I'm like, whoa, she's. You know, and I, I just FYI, you guys who are watching, we actually read um, the second alt book this week. Uh, this month was uh, Glory and Death, which is the uh, right. number two in the series. Um, most of us read. I don't know if you read it, Bonnie, but Kyla hey. didn't get to it. But we'll probably it. spoil that. That's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I, so, I'm gonna read it anyways, but still spoil it. It's fine. But there's a lot happening, and I thought she did a great job of kind of just uh, immersing you in the world, getting you on board the romance really quickly. Uh, understanding the characters, and that's really hard to juggle all those different things at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I could have used a little more romancy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was romantic. There just wasn't a lot of hot and steamy as much well, as I maybe would have well, liked. There was some good parts. Like, I, I, I will post them in Goodreads after this, all the sex pages. I mean, we but, need something um... nasty next month. <laughs> okay. Okay, wait. No, because we let the forum choose. Oh, I forgot. Oh. We let the forum choose, and they picked a young adult book, but I'm going to pick the nasty alt. But we'll oh. get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. It's like face drop. Face happy! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Philippa oh, from the forums asked, were you guys put off by the narration switches, particularly yes. in the first book? Yes. I, I can't handle that. I, I yeah. like my stories to eat. That's what I think we just, we recently read a book where each chapter was a different character, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what was that? Was that, that wasn't the oh, last that one. That was no. uh, Dearly that Departed. One. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the book, but I'm like, I don't want to have to switch back. Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm boring you. No. Veronica. I had a sleepy. I'm sorry. You know oh. what, though? I, I just started reading the sequel to Outlander, Dragonfly and Amber, and it also uh, it switches back and forth mm. between uh, first person and third person, mm. and it's... Uh, it's a little disconcerting. I don't know. I, don't I like shouldn't it. say that. Yeah. Some of my favorite books do that. I mean, really? the dam does that, and yeah. I noticed it, but it didn't bother me. I actually yeah. like the first time it happened. I'm like, oh, this is an interesting thing that I don't see a lot in books, and then I just kind of yeah. went with it, and it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. um, what I think bothers me most about the books, and this is not, this is maybe just something that bothers me about this kind of detective story, is that. You know, it's it's always it's always one of them. It's gonna be one of them. Which one is it gonna be? <laughs> it's like, and so you end up. Whoa! There's a balloon behind you. Yeah, watch out for the balloon, Kyla. <sighs> balloon is the oh, new God. raccoon. Kyla! Goodbye. <laughs> oh God! No! <laughs> um, so Sorry. Like, it, it becomes like a game, like a process of elimination kind of game. It's so creepy. <laughs> Seriously, that was really weird. How it <laughs> was like. <laughs> it's doing it again! What's happening? Is there a 
like a jet stream in your house? Is there like <laughs> Kyle is dating a clown? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my job. That's my new job, actually. Is I. I blow up balloons. Balloon artist. I'm a social balloon <laughs> media marketer. It's because you give good balloons. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh I will say Sorry. It. Oh. Sorry. I was about to say a blowjob joke. I will say. Oh. <laughs> okay. oh. All right. So anyway, yeah. So it's always with the the guessing. Like you kind of always figure out who it's going to be. Like pretty. Like I knew it was that guy in the first book. Like pretty much by the third chapter. Like the second he was introduced, I'm like, he's a creep. Yep. Yeah, the, the problem is when you read one of those books and then they introduce somebody, oh, it's this guy you never saw right. before, you feel robbed. Like, it's yeah. it's almost like a trope of reading any mystery. I mean, I read every single Perry Mason book, like all mm -hmm. 200 there of them. Perry Me Mason too. Books. Me too. Oh. oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what the show's based on. Oh. They're great. There are a million of them. And, and Della Street and he never got together. And I was like, as 12 year old, I'm like, when are they going to get it on? You know? Saying you said Della well, Street was gay. a closet. I thought she was a closet lesbian, and that made her hotter to me. Well, Perry Mason's gay, right? I mean, no, the guy. No, he, he had a crush on no. her. No, I mean, the guy who played Perry Mason. Oh, Thank I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> well, this is mean, an old person show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like murder it's show. It's, yeah, it's Matlock. Okay. It was it's Matlock. It's Matlock. <laughs> Is it Matlock or those it's two different shows? It is Matlock. Oh, Matlock. 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 Perry, Matlock. Perry Matlock. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> Let me back up because Veronica needs a little lesson. So okay. Perry Mason was a regular show that was in black and white for a long time. Okay. And then it went off the air, but it was on for like, I don't know how many seasons. It's one of the longest. I never liked the show. Years. I love the books. I didn't like the show. He right. was hotter in the books. But I'm just saying... That was a long series, and then they stopped running it in the 60s and 70s. In the 80s, Perry Mason came back as mini-series movies, which are all on Netflix streaming. You can watch them all. <laughs> they're very, very 80s. They're very 80s. Lots of feathered okay. hair assistants. Della Burke's I love that, though. Ever seen Banachek? Those are my favorite. He's oh, like, he's like Della Burke yeah, Della. You know, insurance investigator. And he right. like, hits all the ladies. Right. Matlock is different. Okay, Matlock is different. <laughs> but still old people. Okay. And Murder, Matlock, she wrote. You know, Murder, she wrote is, is, amazing. is amazing. Murder, she wrote has yeah. like 13 seasons. They're all Netflix streaming. And then and my mom and watches all, all of them every day. What's the other one with the, with the two people? What's the one Simon with the two and Simon people? Simon and Simon? No, on the other one. Um, Remington Steel. Heart to Heart. No. Oh, heart, heart to Heart. Heart to Heart. Heart to Heart. heart, to heart. And well, then there's well, another one. What was the mm -hmm. other one with the two women who look a little bit like lesbians? What? Uh, Cagney and Lacey? Oh, Cagney yes. and Lacey. Yeah. I never knew which was Cagney and which was Lacey. Were they lesbians? No, but no. they should have been. That but, would be yeah. a good detective series. That would be a much better show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, Columbo. Oh, Columbo was Columbo's great. Good. He was a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. I have some more questions. Oh, Gary asks... Um, and I think this is actually interesting. So in the future, in this world, um, and uh, the people who are killed, the victims of this book, are legal prostitutes. So they're registered, they have to go to training, and you know, uh, health checks and all this stuff, and they have a license to practice prostitution. What do you guys think of that? And they, and they, got, that... they got sin what? tax. Yeah. Which I they thought was a good play on words. So uh, what do you guys hmm. think of that alternative? I thought it was great. I thought it was good, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's interesting. I don't know. I have a problem in that the whole institution. Like, what country does that well? What is of them but that, us. Really? That's no, a, that's not necessarily true. Okay, but, maybe not the ones that do child porn. That's not a good. But idea. I mean, if you have, if you, yeah. if, if, if you, if you have a system in place that's working, like it sounds like this one mostly is working. But would like, that ever happen in real life? I don't know. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I who think am I could. to say? I but totally I, think I, I think it could too. Not in this country, but I think any country yeah. where their laws aren't based on the Bible, it could. Well, you know, it could happen in this country. I mean, who no. knows? It's who knows? Not. Maybe pot will be legal one day and then we can get on with it. That's it very close legal. to happening because it's getting legal in It is everywhere. legal. It's legal it's in like five states and you don't need to have a medical license to do it. 
<laughs> it's legal. It's legal now in Washington. In Colorado. It's completely legal. Like I could just cross the border yeah. and just get it. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty much legal in LA. I mean, every single corner has like a green cross, and I'm like, oh, I was right. like literally naive. I'm like, is that the Red Cross's new environmental thing? No, <laughs> the Green Cross. They'll deliver to your house. Yeah, best. Oh, yeah. I just, I've heard. Interesting. You heard that. <laughs> um, let's move on to. <laughs> I will say, though, and we have read past books where not only was prostitution legal, but mm -hmm. the prostitutes were considered high society. We yeah. have read books like this before. Oh, yeah. Of course. Like, yeah, exactly. It's not a new concept, especially, I just find it interesting, especially in sci-fi and fantasy books, this is so, I, maybe I'm just projecting, but I think it's more acceptable than in other genres of books. Yeah. Well, listen, if you go to Germany, you turn it on your TV, there's like porn right there. And then it's 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 not considered the sort of taboo, put it, put it away, but everybody's really kind of looking at it anyway. Right. I mean, our mm -hmm. culture is very sexually repressed in, in a lot of ways, and I think well, it's... Well, you have also it. other countries that are very repressed, like Japan, then they totally have crazy sex oh. areas. Yeah, there's yeah and then it comes out in a different way. Yeah. yeah. In a much different way. Yeah. yeah. So. Tentacle porn. <laughs> well, not just that, but geishas. Think of geisha yeah. society. Geishas is one of the oldest professions. Like, oldest I mean, that's not <laughs> something that's newfangled with tentacles. That's something that's you know, been around. No, for but I mean, that prostitution is the oldest profession in the right. world. You know, yeah, I mean, that's. Just, it's yeah. going to exist no matter where. It's interesting. Yeah. Also, geishas are actually revered. I mean, not, I mean, they're actually treated well in Japan. They're not treated like. Pretty woman on the corner, they're treated yeah. with respect. Whereas are they? places here, but aren't no they more yeah. like like companions slash entertainers than what still would traditionally geishas? be known yep. as like a prostitute? There's a great documentary about geishas on Netflix that you can look at, and they they do a really good job explaining it. And it's not like it's not what you think. It's not like a massage parlor situation. It's they and are they're highly skilled. They're in, they're entertainers. Yeah, right. you can't just rent a geisha. You have to go I through like, all these, geisha guys. <laughs> you have to go through all these hoops, as it were. Anyway, I digress. But I'm just saying, I would love to personally. I would love to see prostitution in the light that we read these books. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is, I think there's still that morality issue which comes up in this book, which I found interesting that it yeah. came up in this book. It's uh, and there's the idea too that you know there's so many taboos wrapped around sex. Sex isn't just sex. Sex is also tied into power. It's tied into moral issues. It's tied into so many different things. So it's just it's it's not and it, yeah it's not just that it's it's a moral issue. It's the way our society views women right. as also a commodity. Yeah. yeah, and as, as some, and also yeah. your value is when you're young. So that's yeah. the part. If you go to a country that has a more liberal sexual attitude, right. um, it feels like they don't sort of marginalize women after a certain age as much. Like in you know in France or Germany or Europe, like women are celebrated as gorgeous and and sexy. You know, 40s and 50s. Look at Catherine Deneuve and all the you know mm -hmm. beautiful exactly. French actresses. But like in our society, um, you know, there is a sort of a, a, a tipping point of your is your value because basically women are told that their only value is their looks. In, in a way, in our media especially. Yeah. yeah. There has to be a gender equality before there can be a sexual equality. Yeah. Well, so, I don't know. Well, I don't, eh, I don't know. I what if we use sex as power? Yeah. yeah. But, okay. but that's, 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 that's mostly not... A yeah, but it's mostly, <laughs> yeah, mostly, <laughs> yeah, mostly a joke. Yeah, we have Monica. Mostly a joke. had nothing else to say, so... I, think, I thought the book also had some interesting points on birth control. Where uh, they had that yeah, birth what birth was in the book that she said about birth control? Well, they had this thing where it was like a spermicide that just gets rid of everything. Oh, That's yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not using condoms or anything. I don't know. That seems iffy. So I just, I found that interesting because the 90s was sort of like, that was right in the middle of the whole AIDS thing. Mm -hmm. where we were like, literally condoms were on every type, like condom, like, Pro condom this, pro condom that on everything in the nineties. Mm -hmm. So I find it interesting that a book written in the nineties it's heavily in sex. It's called a gin. Well, she's gym thinking act. about the future, you know? It's like yeah. douching yeah, with hand sanitizer. Still, kinda interesting. Yeah. Well, if okay. Um also, <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the, the characters. We talked a little bit about Eve. Um what do we think about Rourke as a character? Because he okay. My, I think he's one of my top. He's up there with Jocelyn. He's one of my top m male like 
fantasy uh, book kind of guys. He's in the top five guys. I know he's a complete Mary Sue. He's perfect at everything. <laughs> he's a millionaire. <laughs> He's debonair. He's like forceful, but then he's romantic. Then he can hack things and can break into. He can yeah. lock pick. I mean, he does it all, guys. Mm -hmm. He does it all. He does I like him. It all. Yeah. I like him. I do too. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> yeah, I'd hit I that. I liked him. Yeah. Did you yeah, think he, a lot of people on the forums thought he was a little rapey and and way really? too like? Well, nah. nah. What do they? I don't understand. What, what point Why did he get raped? Rape her? There was no point where she got raped. He no no no. He was just for, he was very oh, aggressive. aggressive. Like, he uses tempo a lot, and he'd like shake her and he'd grab her face a lot. Like a lot of people didn't, he didn't really grab her face. He like gingerly like touched her chin. It was like impassioned. It wasn't he, like, like he was violent. It's not like he didn't forcefully squish her face. Like he wasn't like a jerk. I, no, listen, I'm just saying with the forums, there was a big question <laughs> under him. Somebody okay. went through and, and counted, and it was like 34 times he they did face touching or something. It was a lot of like, you know, like... Uh, I liked her face. He likes her face. I guess he it's a little unhygienic, but... I hate it when people touch my face. Great, now <laughs> everyone's going to try to touch my face. I'm going to touch your face. <sighs> I hate what it. About, but when men touch your face, are you... No, never. You don't, don't like, like it. Ryan I'm better. I'm better now. But it used to be a really big like. Whoa. Really? Really? Yeah. No, I'm kind of. I'm kind of. You know, I'm. I'm a little bit. OCD. Yeah. About... I don't like. This I won't face drink touching. after people. I. I will not drink after people. Oh yeah. What do you mean? Like drinking we'll the same glass? Same glass. Yeah. We'll drink their. I've never noticed that. Now I'm going to yeah. try to make you do that by accident. Yeah, I am. No, you won't. Yes, I will. <laughs> I will. I'm that kind of person. I will. Touch your face. I'll touch your face. No! I got you a drink, Felicia. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like for sure bar. I've had a, a sip of something you've been drinking before. Yeah, but then she probably never had it. And did she I just like really casually <laughs> like give it? No, I think I can drink after you, Rod. You're clean. Can you show me something? <laughs> <laughs> You're clean. <laughs> wow. Wait, but wow. <laughs> I share food. <laughs> I share food with you, Felicia. I share food with you, and you're okay with that. I'll drink after you. You're all clean. That's why you're free friends. I only have clean friends. <laughs> I dare you to get a shirt that says that, Veronica. I'm clean. I'm clean. Every time, clean every approved. Time, every time I've had to kiss somebody on screen, the minute we like before, I'll go up to them like, "Listen, I don't have herpes." <laughs> Listen, just so you know. Just out. Not a problem. Just just put that out there. But they don't answer back. They just let you wonder if they do. No, they no, never they just, answer. I'm only they doing just it quietly go, me. oh, thank God. <laughs> well, I would want an answer <laughs> back. Sure she had it. <laughs> like, if they're like, oh, well, I wish I could say the same. Like, has any guy Then what would you do? Yeah, what, what would you do if they're like, well, actually, you can't be sore. Yeah, I do. I'm not having a flare-up right now. Like, or whatever. What if they said that? Like, it's cool right now, though. Yeah. But. Good thing insanity's not catching. <laughs> oh my god! No. Okay. That was funny, but I like him. I think he's. I think he's. Even yeah. if he is a total Mary Sue, I still like him. Why do we call Mary Sue? Sue? Why is Mary Sue? Why are we using that as an adjective? What does that mean? It's because a horrible, insulting term that people usually, usually guys use it at a girl who's perfect at everything. And really? On on forums, it's so irritating. Oh, it's I've never, is that why? Is that why the website the Mary Sue calls himself the Mary it's, Sue? It's like yeah. a it's like a oh. literary like Broke. term. Yeah, it's a, I, yeah, there's I a male know. version of it too. Yeah, I can't remember what it's it is like right a, now. It's like a manic pixie dream girl. Well, it's what, or... Isn't it when like you write a book and you put your you're kind of like making yourself the character and Ugh. that therefore that character is kind of perfect and good at yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. I actually yeah, have friends. Kind of I have friends that do that. They do a comic. <clears throat> they do a comic together and. It's, I'm not going to name the comic, but it's the most boring comic ever. And they comic, they don't watch comic this. that I did? Is it that one? They won't watch this. Mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, <laughs> isn't it? Pilot, it's awkward. Isn't it you? <laughs> I, just hate it. I hate it when people do this, when they put perfect versions of themselves as the main character in books or comics that they write. Because here's the thing. As a reader, I hate perfect characters. Yeah. I want characters with flaws. I want characters that fall down flights of stairs by accident. 
I love Jennifer Lawrence. I love her more that she Everyone. fell at the Oscars. Yeah. Everyone loves Jennifer Lawrence. Freaking We're love her. In love oh, with God. I want to be your best friend. I don't care if she's like 22. I just I want to like have hilarious. sleepovers and pillow and fights. She and the press junket. She answered all their stupid ass questions yeah. about like stupid press junkie questions that they always ask at press junkets that no one wants to answer because they're stupid. I know. They ask her, they're like, what pieces are you wearing? Like, her yeah. she's, she's like, like a she's top, like a top and a dress. A bottom, <laughs> I guess. <Yeah. laughs> yes. What did you do to get ready tonight? <laughs> my favorite, yeah, my favorite one is when they're like, what, what was your preparation in getting ready tonight? And she's like, uh, they gave me a dress. It fit. I put it on. I took a shower. Someone did my makeup. I showed up. Like, yeah. there was no... You know, where other actors, they'll go into the art, their, their craft of getting ready or whatever. It's like, come on. So it's the same thing with characters. I don't want to pick up a book and feel worse about myself. I yeah, want to pick well, up a book. It's not I a lot of conflict. You really, that's why I like Eve, actually. And, and Rourke, actually, he gets some really deep stuff. Later in the books, there's some really interesting backstory that comes out of his life as well as Eve's mm -hmm. um, that make them, as you go along with them, you learn so much more about them. Um... I mean, I, I, that's why the, 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 the series really draws me through, because she does try to put a lot of personal stuff in there. You know, of course, him getting implica implicated in all, every single one. Everything? Yeah. yeah really? But, you know, <laughs> he owns well, everything. He owns literally everything. Yeah. Well, that's what I was. La I was laughing because I was reading the second one. I was reading the blurb for it, where they're like, and you know, and and Rourke gets, you know, is he? He's at the center of like a, you know, at the the next case of, of three movies or three movies, three murders, and I was like, I was reading. I'm like, okay, that happened for like a chapter. Yeah. It was like maybe a situation, <laughs> and then it never never came up again. Yeah. So I was right. like, okay, well, whatever. Yeah. Um, Rorky, is it Rorky? No, it's Rourke. No. L. Wynn is saying in the chat room is saying no. it's Rorky. In the no, audiobook, Amanda, wait, in the in the audiobook, how are they pronouncing it? Hold it's on. Rourke. I need to figure this out. It's and it's Rourke. only one word. Like Kelly Rourke. was like, what's, what's with the one what's with the one name? Right, Amanda hates everything tonight, by the way. She's been she's been very upset in the forums <laughs> all night. Hey, why does she hate everything? She, hated, she hates it. We don't like young adult fiction. We don't not I like young like adult fiction. Adult fiction. <laughs> I just want more sexy times. Exactly. And when you're I young just adult, looked the, the young adult book actually didn't win this. I just looked. It won five votes. Oh, wait. You know what? She I hated the audiobook it. voice for Rorke. Aww. Aww. Rorke. 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 Wait. No, we do have a young adult book for next month because I... Okay. I, okay. Well, we'll talk about this in about five minutes, about this horrible poll that I put up. And it's I all good, it. girl. Just let it go. It's fine. <laughs> These things are going to be all right. Just have a drink with us. Oh, it's cool. You really sound like a counselor right now. It's good. Exactly. I oh, did, she liked I did, Eve. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, let me just I did not like, I did not like the counselor around. in this book. You didn't Sorry. what? The counselor in this book. Oh, Mira. Yeah. So there's a, there's a counselor that she talks to who does consulting for the cops and she gives her profiles on the murders and then also is helping Eve through her issues of killing somebody um, during a job and it, on the job and then other th her she has immense issues Eve and you, you literally it's like three books ago like book 31 you still are uncovering her past so yeah. I thought it was weird because that just came out of nowhere. Like, clearly she's had issues, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, yeah, the first eight years of your childhood you don't remember, and you were brutally raped and abused and abandoned. And yeah. then they go into a next subject. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is kind of a big deal. What just happened? What? And they just don't even bring it up again. It's like... Because she spread it out over 30 books. <laughs> that <Yeah. night. laughs> there are so many books. I, I have a all of way so to, like, bring it in. Anyway, yeah. Why by the way, I, a different name? how did you guys think about how um, alcohol and food was depicted in this book? Oh. I liked it because that's totally how I would be in the future. I'd be like, oh my god, this is delicious. I know. I was too. I was kind of like... Yeah, I love the fact that they, the part of the seduction was him getting her coffee instead yeah, of like... In a steak. That's the quickest way to my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And the lobster in Mexico. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yes. That was so in the good. second book. What did you? I guess we could talk about the second book now officially. Okay. You, uh, feel free to join in. I mean, uh, uh, there's a second book. The second book is uh, has a, a little bit more intricate murder, which I thought the plotting was less obvious about who did it. To be honest with you, more, and more, uh, mom jeans. 
Yes, Glory and Death. That's number two. We read. Uh, this is the first time we read two in a series. And to be honest with you, I loved some of the scenes with Work and Eve in this one. They're so romantic. The whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and then her, him giving her the diamond, and that whole thing about her, you know, not wanting to commit to him, and he's the one who's upset. Ha. Huh. Yeah, yeah, it was cute. <laughs> it was good. They were such fast reads, though. They're they're nice sure. because. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't take too long. They're pretty satisfying. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go to Mexico and eat lobster. So I know, I'm me too. <laughs> it's like, oh, that sounds really good. Well, what was weird is that it, I think it was maybe in that one or another one, like, he, they were, like, she was in the bathtub soaking and he comes home and he's literally pressing on tiles and he's getting, like, a sound system out of a tile and, like, a bar. Like, I want to go like, to there. Yeah. I know. It's like the perfect tub. He has everything Ooh, that's bathtub. perfect. Yeah, it was like everything he owns is automated. Like even the yeah. like the limo in the first book mm -hmm. had like all these like auto, they call it auto chef, and mm -hmm. so yeah, like, auto chef. Yeah, and then they had like a replicator. Yeah, yeah, they had yeah, the same right? thing in the plane. Uh, uh, so yeah. people are talking about the the weirdness of the random uh, sex tape in uh, Mexico. I love that part. I that really thought that was going to come back in some way, but it was just like this weird little aside that just kind of happened. So basically, they're doing it in the hot tub, guys, who don't, haven't watched it. And, you know, uh, there's, you know, he's forceful. And a lot of people in the forums had a problem with him because he's way too aggressive. Huh. I don't, I don't necessarily, see it. I didn't mm -hmm. have a problem with it, but uh, a lot of people were sensitive to that. And then at the end, when they're going inside, um, he sees that they've been taped the whole time. And then... What happens? On his security cameras. And he gets all upset. He, like, sees the camera, and he's like, oh, my God, those cameras are voice and motion activated. And she's like, oh, my God. Well, like, she, she's like, what is it? What is it? What, what's happening? Or is there danger? Like, because she's getting all, like, police officer up in there. Yeah. And <laughs> it's really just that he's embarrassed. He's like, lovemaking is private. And she's like, oh. And she grabs the tape. And like, I'm going to go watch it. And she, like, runs away. <laughs> And that was kind of, that was, that was it. That was it. It wasn't like it was broadcast to the internet or anything, like accidentally. Right. No one used it as like blackmail against them. He just got kind of embarrassed that his security cameras caught them doing it. Because I thought that, but that was like a different layer to their characters. Like she would be into that and then he would be embarrassed as this, you know. Yeah. yeah. Just, I yeah. thought it was a really nice twist on their characters. Role yeah. reversal. That's He's pretty. got some old world charm to him too in that sense like he's mm -hmm. a, he might have all these high-tech gadgets and he might own like half the world but he still has some like old-fashioned values mm -hmm. and it seems to me like a guy who owns a lot of high-tech stuff and high-tech everything in his house and plane and limo he would get all like bent out of shape over a camera taping them but whatever yeah. What did you guys think about a role? Roll Inferno asked, "What was up with the statistical analysis if someone was a criminal? What did you think about that technology? Uh, it seemed perfectly reasonable to me if you're putting in analysis and yeah. What What did you think about that kind of technology in the future, like probability and all that stuff? That was very minority reporty. Don't I'm they kind of use that now? Yeah. Does that not exist at all now? Yeah. I mean, they must. Yeah, like profiling or whatever. Profiling, they use that kind of statistics of a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah. they do. Police, oh, dubs. FBI, SCIA, all those guys, they do that, and they have updated studies constantly. So mm -hmm. I have a feeling that that's not necessarily futuristic. A lot of people have been letting me know that a, a male Mary Sue is a Gary Stew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He was Gary Mul Stoy. That's from multiple sources. That's Gary a horrible name, though. There's probably some dude watching right now named <laughs> Gary Stu who's like, what? He's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's totally an individual. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a combination of names you don't see very often. <laughs> Gary Stu. Gary <laughs> Stu. That sounds like a really <laughs> bad drag queen name. Oh, yeah. 22. Yeah. I'm trying to... You guys talk about something because I'm trying to add up the poll right now that I... Yeah. Uh, oh, or a Mary yeah. Stu. Okay, let me see if there's a better man let me see if name. Take Twitter questions. Oh, yeah, take some Twitter questions for a couple Barry minutes. Barry Lou. Barry is still bad. Like, are there any dude names that are airy? Airy. Barry. Gary. Oh, Larry. Oh, you know what we should do? We haven't cast... Do our cast Larry. picks. Larry oh, yeah, we do casting. Yes. Larry. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's that. so, so easy. It's so easy. Okay, who I want? I'm excited to see what you guys say for Rourke. I'm gonna save mine for last. I mean, I don't, 
do the casting. I'm bad at it. Come on, Veronica. I'm bad at it. Bad at it. Bad at it. Bad at it. It's, it's, it's always bad. the same people. Well, wait, Not I'm me. Picking I'm Clive picking Owen. me. Clive Owen. Someone else. Did someone else go? Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Yes, Clive Owen. Yes. Right? Oh, he's yeah. so hot. He's my. Yeah. He's the guy I always go to. He's uh -huh. always. Yeah, are you both picking Clive Owen? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> mine is Ian Summerholder from uh, Vampire Diaries. Who oh. Played oh. He's so really? Crazy, yeah. I don't like his face. Yeah. Are you kidding? It's no. like. He has blue like piercing cat. blue eyes and black <laughs> hair, and he always has his sex face. Like always. Has sex face. Oh, what is sex face? Kind of sex face is like I am seducing you, but I'm being charming, but I'm insulting you, but you want to make out with me. I might, I might kill you because I'm a vampire, but I'm gonna save you at the same time. Sex face. It's all there. Okay. okay. Yeah, people are agreeing with me in chat. I they find don't like him his a little face. too effeminate for me, for for my taste. Yeah, is it oh, he's, like, he's all too like. Too yeah, pretty. He's too like pretty. A, yes, he's too pretty. I want to. I, I can see. I, what, prefer, I can see that as a criticism. I prefer more like of a masculine. Rick and it. when I saw this guy Rourke, I saw him as just more. Like, I don't want to say masculine because that <laughs> sounds weird. That. But you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as pretty. I guess. No, no, no. Mm. I can see that. He's supposed to be like a fallen angel, but Clive Owen can be fallen from an. What about Justin angel. Thoreau? <laughs> Clive Owen can do anything. Is he a real actor? Is he just famous for being gentle? No, he's been in a lot of stuff. He was like, he was in, um, he played a part in Parks and Rec for a little while. He was like what the hot that wore suits. And then the he was on, That's who you always pick. I know, I like him. Angels. Hmm. I like him. He's been I, in a lot of stuff. He was in Sex in the City. He's who always like a about, side I'm character. I'm sorry, Bonnie, I missed who you said. Who? Oh, J uh, Justin Thoreau. Oh, he, he's married to Jennifer Aniston. No, well, they're married. engaged. Are they're, they get married? They're engaged oh. or something. I don't really? know. They're having a baby. I don't um, know what they're doing, but they're doing something. I know Eric. Eric and Chat Fastbender. I'm I'm down with the the Michael. The, oh, I think that's what you what would be. What about easy. Eve, guys? What about Eve? Uh, Wait, what color hair does she have again? Brown. Brown. And it's cut short. Yeah. Someone so, in the Goodreads said Char Charlize Theron, but I don't she's like it. She's a little too hot. A little too I'm hot. not seeing her in stuff anymore. I don't know. I couldn't fit. I can picture her in my head, but I can't actually think of an actress who looks like Eve. You I, know, really, Stana Kasich from Castle, if she had short hair. Yeah, I can see that. Mm. Is that how you said her name? Probably not. Whatever. But I always thought of her somewhat younger, like this character is somewhat younger. Like, what age... What age range is Eve supposed to be? She's probably be. She's supposed to be thirty, I think. Yeah, I think she's supposed to be thirty. Hmm. I was 30. thinking of Marina Baccarat. Baccarat. What? A, oh, but, Marina. <laughs> Marina. Yes. Oh yeah. Because she's got the short hair in in uh, Homeland. So and she's I, really smart. Yeah. Okay. I I agree with Marina. She yeah. was perfect. Wait, Marina. who is she in Homeland? She's she the wife. Is the wife who gets naked. Yeah. Every oh <laughs> yeah. She's so hot. She's yeah. so hot. She I would have said maybe <laughs> Rachel Weiss. Yeah, Rachel Weiss. Weiss. Oh, Rachel, Rachel Weiss, Weiss is perfect. Yeah. yeah. I always thought because she sort of has that innocent, mm. but also sultry, but yeah. also angry. Like in I loved her in the gardener thing. The, yeah. The, the, oh, the I love that. Gardener. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she was also. I I actually really liked her in Constantine. So that's and she plays a detective in Constantine. So I already yeah. had put yeah. two together. And I love her in Stealing Beauty. Because this is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did ever did 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 the Audible book have a Hispanic accent? Because one lucky boy said he what? he pictured yeah. everyone in as being like Latino. Really? Really? Yeah. She has whiskey colored eyes. That's very clear. Like whiskey, mm. which is I guess light brown. Light brown. Yeah. Mm. A lot of people are like Ed Quinn as Rourke. Hmm. Who's Ed? Who's Quinn? that? Um, Ed Quinn was on Eureka. I'm not sure what he's doing now. He's like six four or something crazy. Oh, Jessica now I have Biel. To Google him. Jessica Biel's a good one. No. Is she? No. See, all these people are like too pretty. Like it needs to be someone the like a little two. more I interesting. Think Jessica Biel is pretty, but she has character to her face. She's old though. Yeah. She doesn't fit that age. She's right. old. Well, I mean, not old. She's like thirty two. Jessica Biel is not thirty two. Really? No. No, yeah, yeah. she is, because she's younger than I am, because she was on yes. Seventh Heaven, and I remember Am I thinking of someone totally different? You might yes. be. Jessica Biel was on Seventh Heaven. She's... Yeah. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I'm she's thinking 30. of Jennifer Biel from, like, <laughs> oh. Flashdance, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> 
sorry. Mm. Yeah, I'm just, I don't like, I don't like casting. It's too hard. Because all my people, they never look like people, like real people. Like somehow they're just like an amalgam. Or if they look like real people and not actually actors. Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey and Matt Bomer. Yeah, a lot of people are suggesting those guys. Patrick Dempsey, I can see, but he needs to be like built. Eh. Because Rourke is perfect in every way. He's got like my... Oh, have you guys watched The Americans yet? Yeah, it's good. Oh, the, I guy, that's good. the guy who plays her husband. Oh, right. He's pretty good. Yeah, that's Listen. not bad. I mm. mean, the problem with casting is that you're already kind of projecting your preferences when you're reading anyway. Yeah. yeah. And so what you it's want so it to be may not be what it actually is described as. Because I always think Benedict Cumberbatch for half the books we read. And you even, always do. Always. I always do. Because I like thinking of him. So constantly thinking of him. Or Eva Green, because I think she's gorgeous. Or Dita yeah. Von Teese, because I think she's amazing. I, I just do, And she's mm-hmm. not even an actress. So I just constantly project that stuff on there. And they may not even be quite what's described in the book, but it's just easier. Yeah. For me you know, know, it's funny because even though they described her as having brown hair, I pictured her as being a blonde the entire book. So mm-hmm. now I'm totally just screwed up. There you what? go. Uh-oh. You, yeah. Well, I don't think it always matters. Um, did you guys like any of the... What was your favorite secondary character? Someone asked on... Feeny. Master. Feeny. Totes. Feeny. I like Peabody only because I know later in the series she actually comes in as a really awesome character. I but had a she, feeling. She plays a very minor part in number two, but mm-hmm. she comes back and is one of the major characters later. Spoiler. Is there ever a love thing with Feeny? Oh, my uh, favorite minor character is the cat. Uh, <laughs> oh, yell it. People were complaining about that cat. Somebody Why? Was like, Why? What because the cat did anybody? And snap at it and the, cat, and the cat followed. Like, what cat actually does that? Yeah. Uh, if I, if a man, a man would a man <laughs> But he's Rourke. He does everything. It's perfect. Yeah, everything what's is the, perfect. What's the butler's name? Perfect. Oh, Somerset. Yeah. What is what is his deal? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is his? I almost swore. What is his deal? Um, is it because uh, he holds her jacket like it's full of germs all the time? He has some interesting backstory later in the series. Oh, Eliza Dushku for Eve. That's a good oh. one. Yeah, that's good. Also, Gerard, people are saying Gerard Butler for work. Oh. oh. I, I like him. Oh. You don't like him? You're ruining it in oh. my brain. Sorry. I like Gerard Butler. I think he's oh. better than Gerard. So old. Oh, oh, he's not that God. old. He's, he's not that old. Century. Wait, okay. <laughs> to be fair, you're right. I totally thought of Gerard Depardieu when you said that. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> You're Gerard. right. Gerard Butler is a totally different yeah, person. Totally He's very attractive. Like a... <laughs> I am a jerk. No, hey. Bad. We both got people confused. No, it's okay. I've been drunk. getting Carl Urban and Keith Urban mixed up for years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're different. Well, okay. At least they're both hot. No. Mm-hmm. Carl Urban is hot. Keith Urban Carl. is not hot. Is no. Wait, isn't Keith Urban the country singer that's married yeah. to Nicole Kidman? He kind of looks like yeah. a shorter man version of Nicole Kidman. Yeah. <laughs> you look alike. <laughs> Carl Urban is bones. Oh, I know that. Don't be schooling me. Don't <laughs> be schooling me. I'm sorry, Bob. He's in the new me on movie. Star Trek. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, calm. Everyone calm down. Um, okay. Here's the deal, guys. Uh, if you are a member of the forums on Goodreads, um, you will notice that I put a poll up that you guys could write in because I was trying to save the, save the interim step of calling, making a thread, have you guys make suggestions, go through all the suggestions, pull the ones that I liked, then make a poll that was locked. So I was like, hey, I'll save myself some time and just let you guys write in whatever. That did not work. As you will see, <laughs> on, as you will see on the poll, there's like 4,000 write-ins. Wait, yeah, I already no. know. Was there one write-in that was just so out there bad? Oh, there was some there really was couple, odd. Like, no, you know what? There was some. I don't think there was. Was there? Was there? Did anyone just write in "Joy of Sex" to see if we just review sexual positions for an hour? I'm sure yeah. if they had thought of it. You should have done that, Bonnie. I no. Oh my God! So like, all right. So the first one you put up. So here's the thing: people multiple entried the books. So if you add up the multiple entries. The clear winner is Daughter of Smoke and Bone, um, which is a young adult book. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big young adult book fan, but I've heard amazing things about this book, and I'm really excited that you guys picked it because I wanted to read it for quite a while. 
Okay. Um, so that will be our main pick for March. And then our alt, I'm picking from this selection because you guys are going to complain there's not enough sexy time. I'm picking the one that made me, like, I don't know if I can actually finish this book because it's so racy. Um, <gasps> what? It is, it is Pleasure Unbound Ooh. by Larissa E. Ione. They don't really have anything to do with each other, it seems, but you know what? <laughs> Whatever. Um, right, Monica, you, number one. On Felicia, I'm going to download that right now. On the, wait a minute. On the Felicia Blusher Meter... It's what like a it's talking? like a whoa, what did I buy? Is this like a twelve? Like it's a one weird. out of ten is a twelve. So it was a while mm -hmm. ago, because I'm a little more jaded in my romance now. When I when I first got it, I was like, whoa, this is even over the line for me. Um, mm -hmm. On a Cressley Cole meter, would you <laughs> rate it a one <laughs> it's Cressley I Cole think it's or a two? Than Cressley Cole. <laughs> it's racier than Cressley Cole. Really? Although, Although barely, I think it's about the same. Okay. Oh, no. oh, I never got a little bit. On a, like how many tentacles? From oh, one gross. Tentacles. <laughs> Do you guys yeah. ever get a little bit embarrassed adding some of these to your to read list? Never. No, I don't okay. add them to the two. Re no, I don't even do that on my. You know, what? I'm all about owning what you like. No, yeah, I, I know, I know. Well, just I, I never felt that way until I just added Pleasure Unbound. Yeah, just the name I, of it. It was just I like recently, like I never felt that way. <laughs> I ride the bus to and from work now every day, and mm. uh, and and even though it's on my Kindle, I have to sit next to people. Yeah, and it's fun. Know, and so I'm still like like the whole. I'm like yeah. I'm yeah. like this. <laughs> no, really? I, I, I told you this last time. It's a great way to strike up conversations with the craziest people on the bus. I don't and want to do that. Everyone is crazy on my bus. And they think you're <laughs> crazier. When you have to describe a book about dinosaurs that shapeshift into guys and that they have sex with hot ladies to save the world, Trust me, no. you'll be the not you'll you'll be the craziest no. creator. No, I don't want to even tell them what I am what is in my coffee. I don't want to <laughs> I don't even want to to like, oh, it's raining out. I don't want to. I just I don't oh, want to talk. Oh no, them. someone already Aww. commented on my my adding pleasure unbound <laughs> to my list. Oh, Megan God. wrote, "You added this hilariously fast." I will, Thanks, say, <laughs> I will say that when you add those books to your Amazon wish list, it gives uh -huh. you some interesting recommendations. Well, it's definitely in the erotica vein, I think. I think this is like transition book. Is it erotica or is it not? But but remember, our main is a young adult book. It's called Daughter, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, and it's incredibly romantic, I hear. So we got romance on our main, okay. and, our, and I assume that you guys are going to read the read the alt this month. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Maybe wait, first. so we have romance on our main vein. Yeah, and then... <laughs> Oh, come on. Yay, Kyla. Yay, sex joke. That was pretty good. Oh, <laughs> I apologize. All right. I and then, for that. that was awesome. <laughs> and then I'm going to pick the books the next month after that. So there you go. Okay. Um, okay, well, that's all, that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching. It's been an awesome hour. Uh, it, please join oh, the Good Forum. And can, I, can I mention something really quick? Yeah, everybody can go down. What are you doing this month, you guys? Uh, well, first of all, uh, we wanted to probably mention that um, we're going to be at Emerald City. Some of us will be at Emerald City Comic Con. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll can, be there. So we might do a vaginal fantasy meetup. We might not. So just check Goodreads and check our Twitter. We'll probably make some sort of announcement if you guys want to do something. If not, no worries. I'm really easy to find. I'm going to be even easier to find at Emerald City because I my back is broken so oh. I'm, I'm, away. I'm sorry body that's okay so I'll just be hobbling so just find me hobble and say hi um but I do want to thank all of our fans that tweet at us when they yeah. draw pictures of us and like take screen grabs and give us suggestions of books and movies to watch thank you so much for following us all on twitter and commenting because that really makes up for all the crappy comments on youtube don't even don't oh, read the comments don't read the comments I made that I mistake see. earlier I met a whole group of uh, ladies at um, Farpoint Convention, and they cosplayed, and they won a bunch of awards with their cosplay. And uh, one of the women said, "I met, I met them. Now we play WoW together, and like they're really oh. they're some of my best friends now. And I met them because of your group. So Yay. that's why, oh, God. that's why we have fun. And yeah, I really appreciate that part of what we're doing." Um, Yay. let's see, Yay. what am I up to? Oh, if you want even more stuff to read, uh, mm -hmm. Sword and Laser this month is reading uh, Down Below Station by C.J. Uh, Sherry. Yes. So uh, if you want another female book that is written by a lady uh, that is also science fiction, that might be a good one to pick up too. We're also on Goodreads. Buzz marketing. 
Perfect. <laughs> no, do it. Do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and me. And then me. Uh, I should be. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go, Carla. No, you're good. It's your, it's your okay, turn. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, um, I should be at Emerald City Comic Con, too. So that'll be fun. So we'll hang out. And then uh, uh, that's it. Really. Oh, oh, I wrote a comic for Womanthology. For Yay. IDW. They're, it's Ooh. for Womanthology. It's their uh, space, space series. It's the last one in that series, number five. Um, and Yay. mine is called Broken Glass. So. Oh, and the, 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 the trade paperback of that of all the space comics, and I have a comic in the first one mythology space, mm -hmm. that's going to be a hardcover, uh, not hardcover, but like a trade paperback of all the space comics from yep. mythology. Oh, interesting. And you can pre-order it right now at your local comic book store, so you should do that. Oh, yes, and I have can. another thing. I have one more thing. Okay. <laughs> if you're a writer, uh, Sword and Laser is going to do an anthology this year uh, where it can mm -hmm. take submissions uh, for the Sword and Laser anthology starting on March 1st. Um, so if you want to go to swordandlaser.com, we have the anthology guidelines on the website there. So if you want to write a short story and be published, submit a story. You can That's submit amazing. up to three stories. We're going to read them and maybe oh, put them wow. in a real book. That's, That's amazing. amazing. What a great project. Awesome. Yeah, we're really excited about it. It's going to be super fun. It's gonna be you can do you can do, be a sword or you can be a laser or you can combine both of them. A sword. Laser. laser sword. A sword and laser. Oh, and Lord. Felicia, I'm going to write a short story about my original dream. Oh, original, you have to. I'm going to. What? You have to. I have oh. I have a, a, a I my last nano my first nano was based off a dream I had and only Felicia I think knows the actual plot. You guys will want to read this. <laughs> is there, is you want to read it. Ask you one Veronica, is it does it have sexy times? Can we read it for an No, it doesn't, unfortunately. Oh. And if I added it, it would be weird. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, no, yeah. just do it. Do it to the what? Just live the life it needs to live. Just. I'm do just it. gonna let it run its course. Don't put sexy just, time in it. No. Um, <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Uh, oh, and also tomorrow we're announcing a huge thing for Geek and Sendry, uh, having to do with tabletop. So um, when you hear that news, uh, everything will be announced in the morning. I can't wait for you guys to watch it and uh, maybe join in because it's a really cool community event we're, we're throwing tomorrow morning. So, cool. okay, that's it. Bye, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next month. Bye. Bye. Bye.